taking control of your life. That's what this show is all about. I feel like I should run for office. Appreciate it. All right, today we're going to talk about some controversial forms of racial discrimination. Later in the show, we'll talk to two women who say not only did they not get hired for jobs they were applying for and were qualified for, they didn't even get a job interview. Why not? Well, they say it's because of their black sounding names. But first question Do you believe that blacks get stopped by the police just because they're black? Our first guest says he's been pulled over, get this, a hundred times. A hundred times. Here's more of Antonio Lomax's story. Racial profiling is not just a police officer stopping someone in their car. It's, it just takes so many forms. You know what I mean? It's prevalent. It happens to us every day. I was harassed yesterday by the police, as a matter of fact. Unfortunately, I'm, um, I'm defined by the mistakes that I've made in my past. The police, hey, he's a convicted felon. We know he's a convicted felon. He must be doing something. So I'm getting stopped all the time. Police don't have to know you where I'm from to, uh, to stop you. You know, if you fit a certain description, the braids in my hair, a do-rag on my head, earrings in my ears, the type of car that you may have. We feel like all going to the bar and we know we're going to be going, you know, it's going to be four or four, five of us in a truck or something like that. We ride in my white friend's car. We won't get stopped. Guaranteed. I mean, it, we all know that if we ride in his truck, we're fine, no matter what we're doing. This is Antonio Lomax and Sandra Seegers. Sandra is a taxi cab commissioner in Washington, D.C., who says some profiling is actually necessary. Antonio, let me start with you. A hundred times? A hundred times. hundred times. Uh, yes, over a hundred times. I was actually just giving your producers a number. I give it's a bit more. I get stopped on an average of two days, two days out of the week. Because? Well, unfortunately, um, uh, fruits of a misspent youth, let's say. I'm, I'm defined by the, the mistakes that I've made in the past. What kind um, of mistakes? I've been convicted. I'm a convicted felon. Uh, almost three-time convicted felon. Mm -hmm. um, convicted of? I was convicted of armed robbery, drug possession, and drug manufacture. Mm -hmm. Did you serve your time? Yes, I so, paid my debt to, to society. So when you're going down the street, no one can tell... That you've been convicted? Uh, well, no, no one can tell that you can be convicted. So it still doesn't explain no, why you got pulled over all those times? It doesn't. And what do no, you think? No, it doesn't. Well, I believe that, uh, unfortunately, I fit a profile to which uh, our society adheres to. Andre, do you think he has a right to be upset about it? Yeah, he should be, but that's life now. And th there's a certain look, because I'm a tax care commissioner, there's a certain look that's profiled. There's a certain look, and he just said it. So why would he continue to look that way? If he knows this the way, they're going to stop him. Excuse me. It's a, white, it's a white man's world. You're judged by the company you keep. The book is judged by the cover. Yes. The one bad apple yes. spoils the bunch. I agree. I do agree. But where does it, where does it end? Where does it stop? When do, I mean, when do we set a limit? And wait, and wait a second. Sandra, what do you mean it's a white man's world? That's it. We just, that, end it. We, just end it. we just have a small role in this world. White man controls everything. So, so you're saying Antonio should just suck it up and recognize that, that, <laughs> like. that, that he's going to be that's unfairly like. pulled over yes, and we just is. have to deal okay. with it. Now, yes, that, that to me is almost as outrageous as being stopped for a hundred times. Um, well, that's, that's true too, but that's life. I mean, that, no, life. No, 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 no. That's not life. It, it is no, no, life. that's not life. That's called harassment. And, okay, you, okay. you need to file a, lawsuit, called, file a lawsuit. File a lawsuit. Yeah, file and get paid. No, 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 but sorry. that's how it is now. You dress a certain way. You have the gangster look or, or whatever they call Gangs, it now. What does a gangster look like? With the baggy pants, what the head the, on oh, the back, with the shirt look like? on. That's what a gangster look like. Do you have any children, man? No, I have nephews you and nieces have, and oh, godchildren. No children. No children. Now, see, this is very easy. I'm black easy myself. I don't have to have someone. children. I'm black. Okay. I'm, I'm black. We, we I don't have to that. have children. We can see I that. I don't have to have children. I'm just saying, my point to is, it's very I, I, easy. I the, system, the system works. I don't works. have children either, Antonio, so therefore we shouldn't have an opinion? No, no, not at all. What's that supposed to mean? No, not at all. Wait a minute, Antonio. Are you telling us that people ought not draw any conclusions, make any assumptions have any impression based on the way you look absolutely based on the way you dress absolutely what i'm saying is is that uh you know what you're i mean you're saying absolutely someone who who doesn't it's very easy for the, for someone who the system works for to say that it works i mean it's working for you it's never worked against you oh you okay? you, you, you it's, it's uh, never worked against you know what you. i've been stopped before because i'm i don't care 
Okay. Oh, I know, see, that's the you know problem. what? I don't, don't care. care. The reason I don't care because I, I know I didn't do anything. I am a two time convicted felon. I know I didn't do anything. I didn't stop. It makes me in society's eyes. When they stop me, they ask me questions, I show them my ID, and I move on. I don't and, care. I so, and, and it does not bo- it does not bother you that you are stopped no, because you are a black woman. No, it it does not me. bother you that you are you are detained well beyond uh, uh, when you are supposed to be simply because you are black. The color of your skin. You have done nothing. Are you are you, are you even most getting cases, written a ticket? In most cases, yeah, ticket? I, I had a ticket before. Okay, but most cases when they stop you, they have a person they're looking for. A couple weeks no, ago, that's not true. A couple, weeks, that's ago, not true. A couple weeks ago, I was. I was I'm not accepting the idea. The idea that just because you are black, you're being pulled over. I like yes. to know what else is going on. No, let me, well, let me, let me give you. Let me give you an example. I was born here in L.A. Okay. In an area called Pico Union. Okay. Pretty bad area. Uh, a couple of young kids from USC College were busted uh, because they were down there trying to buy drugs. They were white. Okay. And the police know at 2 o'clock in the morning in this area where there's a lot of drug dealing going on, if you are a white person, you are there for one person, one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to buy drugs. Absolutely. So they got Absolutely. racially profiled. Nobody Absolutely. said anything, but like a black guy get pulled over, and then all of a sudden there's a beef. Well, you, it is a beef because the world is much bigger than where you're from. Now, granted, you're right. In a all black neighborhood, if I see three white kids out at two o'clock in the morning, of course, we all know why they're out there. Yes, we all know why they're out there. But, well, but unfortunately, society says that if I see a black man riding down your block, oh, I know why he's out all there right. too. All right. Now, Antonio, you get stopped sometimes because you're not wearing your seatbelt, right? Uh, no, I can stop because I am wearing my seatbelt, but it's the easiest way for them to stop me and, I, and not have to write a ticket. You see, in Chicago, they have to do, you, and you if you get, get stopped, it has to you be something called ticket. probable cause. No, that's the thing. I you never get, get a ticket. ticket. I don't speed. Up. I don't, I get my seatbelt on. I am, I'm, I'm uh, uh, a lady, Nazarite a right now. And, and, I'm a Nazarite. <laughs> I have to be. I have to be. And, and, <laughs> Antonio, have you? Well, you know what? It's my car. Antonio, I mean, I, have I, you filed yeah, a complaint? Have I filed a complaint, Larry? You got, you got, I, I, I filed complaints. You got stopped a hundred times. Have you filed a complaint? Yes, I filed complaints. I filed a complaint at several police out. stations. And what happened? A- absolutely. They throw it, throw it out. out. It's nothing you, I can do. Know what, it's nothing, what I, can, has it's happened, nothing I can do. I just want to know. Once you get a record, okay. you, are in the, you are in their computer. Yeah. Okay. Now, young black man, light eyes, corn rolls, just robbed a bank. You're going to get stopped. <laughs> uh, uh, and and, and, and sure. you're going to get stopped. And, and sure. Right. Well, uh, I mean, don't you want the police to be proactive? A middle-aged black man with a mustache and short hair just robbed stopped. the bank. He He's going to get stopped. Of course, right. but you, you're talking about specific inc- incidents. No, it's a whole which, bunch of no, incidents where true. black people that's do things true. or white people do that's things. That's not true. If a woman gets just ripped that's off some people, so then all fit my description. Stop me! I don't care if they stop me. If the shoe fits, you. If the shoe fits, that's you. You don't care. I care if they stop me because you know what? Did you do it? If you didn't do anything, just move on. I'm sorry. It doesn't work like that, Mom. It does not work like that. I'm sorry. I am a Wait, 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 Sandra Antonio, I, I have a very close buddy who's a police officer with a local police department. Okay. Went on a ride along with him. He's white. Okay. Went on a ride along with him. Nighttime, car comes down the street, no headlights on. Mm-hmm. Car pulls into a gas station, we pull up behind him. Guy gets out of the car, he's black. First thing he says is, you pulled me over because I'm black. We couldn't even tell what race he was. His partner said the same thing. When my friend and I went back to the department, I said to him, how often when you pull over a black car... Or, or a car driven by a black person, does that person say, you pulled me over because I'm black? He said 80% of the time they make that complaint. I then saw a black officer. I said the same thing to him. When you pull over a car with a black driver, how often does that black driver accuse you of pulling him over because he's black or calling you Uncle Tom or something like that? He said 30% of the time. Now, what does that tell you? Well, Tells me a lot of people are, are whining and crying just because they're black. I'm not saying it was your situation. No, no, no. It says I, me, I, tells, I tells me a lot I'm of people don't give play me, the I'm race card when they, get, when they get pulled I'm over. I'm not placing blame. I have accepted what I've done. And I accepted the fact that, you know what, I just might have to be defined by a mistake that I made when I was 14, 15 years old, a life that I chose. Can we agree that most police officers, most of them, mm-hmm. are just trying to do their jobs? They want to get up in the yes, morning, they want to go in, they want to come home, most, kiss their wife. But let's not forget that there are police officers who are not just doing absolutely. their jobs. That's absolutely. all I'm saying. Absolutely. Let's not minimize absolutely. what's really going on. You know what I mean? Let's not minimize what, no. that. I tell you what, Every I don't, I don't want the police bad. hands tied. If you didn't do anything, they won't bother you. You know what? They may take you in and let you go. But so what it's like. And if, we, if somebody raped me, robbed me, and I give them a description of short hair, gray hair, beard, stop everyone that looks like that. Because it may be him. Yeah, I, Stop I, I want the police to do that job. I hear you. But until that happens, I mean, you know what I mean? 
I mean, right, exactly. You're just going to continue except being stopped and detained. You are, you know, you're, you're, you're being compliant with well, okay, you. You are stop conforming. You. They have to stop you until they find out it, 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 you know, it, it wasn't you or was you. Me. One way or the other. It either it was or wasn't. Stop, if it stopping, wasn't somebody, you, stopping somebody solely because they're black is, is illegal. Yes, it is, it is illegal. illegal. But unfortunately, Taking they, race into consideration as one of many variables, time of, the, of day, what you're dr driving, absolutely. whether or not they're looking for another suspect. Absolutely. High crime area is perfectly legitimate. That's perfectly legitimate. Now, it's not fair for you to be stopped a hundred times if just because you're black you were stopped. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. and, I'm not, and, I, and I'm not condoning that. All I'm suggesting is most cops don't do that. Most cops are trying to do their jobs. There's some bad apples, yes. there's some bad lawyers, there's some bad doctors, there's some bad everything. Apply, okay? Larry, if we can apply that same philosophy to our officers who protect us every day, why can't we apply that to our children who make mistakes? Not all of them who are driving cars fair are enough. criminals. Fair enough. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk to a young man who's been stopped 25 to 30 times since he was 16, yet he's never been convicted of a crime, never been arrested for a crime. We're going to talk to him next on Go Away. I've been stopped by police and law enforcement about 30 times. I do not believe I was stopped on all these occasions because I was doing something wrong, but because of the color of my skin. And I see all of these floodlights pointed at us, and then I see all these officers with guns pointed directly at me, and I'm like, I just froze. We're back talking about racial profiling. Antonio admits that he's been in trouble with the law. He has several convictions on his record. However, our next guest has no criminal record of any kind, yet he says he can't walk out of his door without being stopped by the police. Here's Cortez Jordan's story. Racial profiling is a major problem in our city. Since the age of 16, I have been stopped by police and law enforcement about 30 times. I do not believe I was stopped on all these occasions because I was doing something wrong, but because of the color of my skin. Most recently, when I was walking across the street with a group of my Caucasian friends, I was stopped and singled out of the group by an officer who said he stopped me because he believed I was carrying a weapon by the way I was walking. It was extremely humiliating to be stopped in front of my friends. I have never committed any crimes or carried any weapons, ever. I actually work with middle school programs, um, try and relate to them that they don't need to be involved in violent behavior and try and provide them with positive alternatives to these type of things. Racial profiling is happening in the United States of America in 2004, and that it is everybody's problem. This is Cortez Jordan and Jesse Lee Peterson. Jesse is a radio host who believes that racial profiling can save lives. Let's start with Cortez. You've been stopped by the police how many times? Between 25 to 30 times since the age of 16. Are you always dressed the way you're dressed now? I'm not always dressed the way I'm dressed now, <laughs> no. Um, I, I'd like to make a point though that I don't have any type of criminal record. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a law-abiding citizen and the incidents that I'm, I've been addressing in my city, Eugene, Oregon, um, is this is the fourth complaint I filed against the city of, of Eugene's police department. What's the racial composition of Eugene? Um, it's about 0 0.05 African-American. Mm -hmm. So it's less than 1%. So, you, so it's like you're the only one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There, there, um, there goes Cortez. Let's get him. The, 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 but the, point, the point I'm trying to make, the point I'm trying to make though, is, you know, I, I've heard what she said about, you know, that it saves lives and it, it, it's helping people, but it's actually really hindering me. And I'm trying to do my job. I work for um, an organization that is largely Caucasian. Um, it's really difficult sometimes to break these negative stereotypes that people basically have of me. And I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm actually doing my job when I'm being harassed. Jesse, uh, officers will tell you that racial profiling is a legitimate police tool. Yes, yeah. What it is mean? necessary. You know, I've been stopped by a police officer many times, too. And when I was younger, I used to get angry about it because I had been told that it's because I'm black. And so whenever, especially a white cop stopped me, I automatically get angry. But I realized that over the last 40 years or so, not all black Americans, of, sort, of course, but most have not uh, disciplined their children. You know, crime is out of control in the black community. Uh, and so we ask the officers to come in and protect us. And when they come in, we get upset about it. So what about and incidents? I was getting upset because I had been told by the so-called black leadership that it's racial profiling. They're coming after you because you're yeah. black. And I had no one else telling me anything different, differently than that. 
But when I drop my anger and realize that sometimes the good have to suffer with the bad, it's easier now for me to go but, but through that. But in the that. case of Cortez, what about no, no. What, what about incidences of when that? That's not the case. I, I'm a disciplined person. First of all, I was right. raised with a strong moral moral fiber. The last time I was stopped, I was walking across the street with four of my Caucasian friends, and I was stopped because the officer said, by the way he saw me walking, I looked like I was carrying a weapon. Were oh, you? But, but you no. know. Then he let you go. It's a fair question. question. Were, were you? Were, 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 no, I did not carry go. weapons. You, you, know. think, you think some officer saw you walking down the street and said, hey, black guy, I think I'll go and bust him. <laughs> Let me ask you this. I'm asking let, you. Let me ask you, let me ask you Answer this. Answer my question he first, didn't though. Yes, I do, because you know what? Mm -hmm. He didn't even follow his own procedure. If he truly believed I have a weapon, why did he not call backup? Because that's, a, that's the way they do their procedure. Right. He came up to me and said, I believe you have a weapon. I said, well, where are the other cars? Because if I really thought somebody had a weapon and I was an officer, I would take every precaution. And they are trained to do that. Right. And what? he didn't believe that. He pulled me out of a group of four, about five other people, or four other people, had me come out. He didn't search any of them for weapons. If he if he what? thought it was a dangerous situation, he would have stopped stopped them and asked them for weapons. Jesse, he stopped me and only sound, addressed sound, me. Sounds to me like he has been pulled over, stopped just because he was black. Well, if he if what he's saying is true, it's unfortunate that he has to go through that. But he he should understand that it's because of we have not taken responsibility within the black community. Another thing too no. is that no. these young Stop people taking responsibility no. these young for people, what? What are we taking responsibility on. for? These young people tend to are we guilty for everything? Give the officers attitudes too. You know, when they stop, they get loud mouthed, they go off on the cops. And so the cops become uneasy because they don't know what they're dealing with I think at that you point. Think the cops get so intimidated because I'm not, articulate. I think that's really what it comes down to. They think never, they, when, they, when the, the officer stopped me, he thought I was going was gonna to just, you know, spit some game at him. And I didn't. I was like, sir, you're violating my civil rights. I have a right to assembly. I can walk across the street without being anymore. stopped. Okay? And if, and if you truly believe that I'm a danger, why are you not stopping these other people that are with me? If but you see, really believe that. Two not... of my friends were visibly intoxicated, and he didn't say anything to no. them. Was officer, he really concerned about the safety of me and my party? He didn't know who was driving. He didn't ask officer, any of those questions. You, you were with the officer, too, weren't you? I was with four Caucasians. I was the only African American in the group. But what you and have to realize, the officer searched. is not stopping you to articulate. He's just doing a routine check. He's doing a routine check. If you follow him, me and not him, if you follow people, his instructions, he's doing his you job. wouldn't have to go through that. What? But if you give yeah, him a mouth, he didn't lock him up. He didn't lock him up. He didn't have a gun. He looked like he had a gun. He didn't have a gun. Maybe he had a bulge. Maybe he had a bulge. Come on, no, that's not true. And he didn't lock him up. He let him go. 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 You know what? I got a bulge right now. What's that on me? I don't know. I got a bulge right now. I got a bulge right now. Security. <laughs> Security, right. you got a bulge right you now. You know what I mean? What? I got a gun. It's a I got a gun. Hold on. Go ahead, Kirk. Go ahead, Kirk. The thing about it is, though, is, is that if I'm doing the right thing, if you're doing the right thing, you should be treated with respect and dignity. And that's, that's all I do. The I'm thing about it is, that here, but you, no, that's not true. Here's the thing. Here's something I, here's something I like to, to address. I have done five trainings with the city of Eugene's police department about racial profiling. I work for the same organization that, they, that actually stopped me. I work for the city of Eugene. I work with youth. I work at a swimming pool. I'm an assistant manager. Um, I do all sorts of programs trying to keep youth and give them, you know, keep them off the streets, give them positive alternatives. I'm a positive force in my community. So if you're going to continue to put pressure and intimidate and harass the positive force in, in your community, guess what? They're going to leave. They're not going to. They're not going to. You know, I got to push that. You know, I got to push that. Let me just say this for a second. And, and, Cortez, and Cortez, there are certain cops that are bad cops. We know that. Yeah. They're bad cops. They're bad doctors. They're bad lawyers. They're bad, bad in, in everything. But most of them are trying to do their job. Okay. Wait, let me finish. When I was young, I just got my driver's license when I was 15 and a half, 16, and I got stopped 30, 40 times because I looked young. And they pulled me over and they said, I'm sorry, you look too young. May I see your license? I was polite. They were polite. With one or two exceptions. One or two cops said something that I thought was, was inappropriate. Uh, I filed a complaint one time. Nothing much happened. But, but for the most part, the cops who pulled me over explained to me why they pulled me over. Yeah. And it was that. You said that, you know, the majority of, 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 of our police officers are good people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what I keep hearing the both yeah. of you say is, is that there are some people in the African-American community that cause problems. So the rest of us Must should suffer, suffer for that. Absolutely. And you know what? There right. are, the majority of African-Americans are good people. That's true. Okay?
you know what? 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 You know comes a high percentage of crime. Yeah. I, that is know, a fact. You know what, though? Most young black men don't commit yeah. crime. That can is I, true. Can I, can I but 25 percent of young black men have criminal records in the city. Can I, can I say something? Can I say something? That's a lot of people. Can I tell you something? 85 percent of white men of all serial killers were white men. Does that mean every white man is a exactly. serial killer? Yeah. Thank you. No. Thank you. No. Thank you. No. Why, no. why are we no. Okay, Antonio, calm down. You're not being profiled I'm now. Calm down. I'm from this when we come back, we're going to meet some college kids who were held at gunpoint by campus police. Was it because of their race? Don't go away. Do you believe that this was an aberration, or do you believe that most cops racially profile black people? Uh, we yes. believe they racially profile mm -hmm. black yes, people. Yes, they do. Yes, we do. Most officers are simply trying to do their job, and they have dangerous jobs, and we ought to appreciate and respect what they're doing That's for right. us out there every day. I agree. And, I would and, have... and, and make sure that we weed out the bad ones. You hire people yes. in your organization. I do. You got a resume, and, and, it, and it said Tequa Jones or Mary Jones. You wouldn't call Tequa Jones back because her name is Tequa? Most likely, no. talking with people who say they've been victims of racial profiling when my next guest came back from a college party they never imagined that they would find themselves surrounded at gunpoint by the police please welcome Vanessa Monique and Marcy Thank you all for coming <laughs> what happened that night well we were coming from a party we got a ride with a friend that was in one of my classes and Marcy had and what, noticed what race was your friend he was Hispanic mm -hmm. by the way what's the racial composition of your school um, it's probably white. Yeah, eighty-five percent white, mm -hmm. and um, probably maybe ten percent African American. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And we noticed that uh, a campus police officer was following our car as we pulled in front of our student union. The next thing you know, we're hearing over a PA system, you know, driver, get out of the car with your hands up. So we looked like, what did we do? Right, but we <laughs> thought nothing of it because. The driver, you know, we were like, okay, we're females. They're not going to do us wrong because usually they don't. So the, the driver got out, and then once they told, you know, the back passenger to get out, and then from there it was just chaotic. Terrible. I was the second person to get out the car after the driver, and what I got out the car to was about nine police officers from the city, from the Macomb, which is our uh, campus, our um, county police, mm -hmm. from the campus. It was three different departments there. Sheriffs. The sheriffs. They were all there. It was nine, nine, police, nine cars police cars. There. The K-9 unit. We yeah. were just coming from a And the K-9 unit? And, 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 and dogs. And when we heard dogs, we yeah. rolled the window down and we heard yes, dogs we barking. Heard dogs. So okay, so you guys get out. Mm -hmm. And I got out first. I was the first girl to get out. And I see all of these floodlights pointed at us. And then I see all these officers with guns pointed directly at me. And I'm like, I just froze. I just froze. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I just was like, please don't sneeze, don't and call. And gun, gun <laughs> <laughs> Don't do anything. Yeah. At gunpoint. Just at gun, gunpoint. Guns pointed at you too, Marcy? Yep. They had All four of officers with guns pointed directly at us. Mm -hmm. They made us get out the car one by one mm -hmm. and walk to, he said, walk towards me. So I did. And, you know, the first thing I asked him was, you know, officer, what did I do? What did we do? None of them know they what we did. They don't know. They, don't they know. didn't say anything. They just put cuffs they on us. They don't know. We, we were standing there. Just put cuffs on us? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they searched they searched, us. they searched me twice. But I wasn't searched. You know, that's... And they searched you twice? Yes. And they didn't search her at all. They nope. searched, they her searched once. me once. A white student called in to our campus police and well, they said the they Macomb were police. the Macomb police, the city police, and they put in a call, you know, to the area mm -hmm. law enforcement, and they said, you know, he was threatened with a gun by five black males. How, now, how did you find that out? <laughs> we listened. We actually saw the audio and the video of the incident, and we heard the call. We heard the actual call. But they never really told us that. So the, but the officers never told you that. No, no they you, said you just, they didn't know what it. it was. They just said they didn't know. Well, if they're looking for a car full of black men, why'd they stop you? Because they Can were bored. Can you ask them that? They, they, were bored. they were bored. I mean, <laughs> they didn't have anything to do. I mean, it's Macomb. What do That's they do? That's why I they feel the racial profiling. Students. You guys filed a complaint? Yes. Absolutely. And what happened? 
That was crazy. They didn't want us the to The complaint follow. process at our mm -hmm. school hadn't been updated since 1981. Mm -hmm. So for us to go and say, okay, this happened to us last night and we want to file a complaint about it, we actually had to tell a strange Why? officer, like, what was going on that night, what happened, and so that they can have, uh, nobody, like, something Nobody to say. apologized to you. Nobody no, said we were looking for, point, for, no. for five suspects. You don't they match the description. The we end. blew it. We're sorry. We're, nobody said that. They no. said they did their job and we were lucky to get off. Yeah, they but said no, usually no, they, they... But Larry, that's why you file a complaint. If the cops are wrong and you're so in the right, okay. you file a per, uh, complaint and let the law take effect. You, no, These will no. work out on your behalf. No, it but will not you, work on our behalf. It will work out on your behalf. Because if we had... If Monique, you were in the right, I, I agree with Jesse, it will work procedure. on your behalf sooner or later. Yeah, sooner right. or later. If, if those cops are routinely pulling people no. over for no reason other than that they're black or they think that they're black, right. Right. and enough people file complaints, sooner or later, it's going to establish a pattern. What happens often, though, with a black person, if they get pulled over and they complain, but they don't file a complaint. Exactly. And I'm not saying they act on every single complaint, but you let enough officers get enough complaints, sooner or later it's going to affect their career. It's going to affect their promotion, it's going to affect their pay, and I would urge every black person who feels that he or she was pulled over wrongfully, look at that badge number and file a complaint. Well, that was the problem. It was too many floodlights. You couldn't see. You couldn't see. And they won't tell us who the officers were. They won't tell us who the officers you know, were. You know, Everything happened. One of the things that they we have to change, pointed. we work in, in my organization, Bond, we work with a lot of young black men who are angry, come from gang violence well, and things not, like that. Not, and so what, what we have told them is they have to adjust their attitude. You know, whenever there's a white cop and a black person involved in this and that, it's not always well, racial. No, no, I, agree, I agree with you but on that, are, Jesse, but that's not what we have here. And no. all the we have, we have, have, we have young, college, young college students, no attitude. They got pulled over. Uh, clearly, they got pulled over when the cops were looking for well, we black males, according, according to them. Black males, and and they're not and they're not black males, obviously. <laughs> How is but we don't know what they had to do were in the situation. You know, we just have one side of the story really right now. We don't really know what how they reacted to the well, officer. Well, if you were there, then you can say this is the as you, aftermath. As you listen okay. to them speak. The fact that they're in a majority white university, they already have this mentality that the world is against them. No, we so don't. We don't. That's why we go to that environment if we don't want that person to white cop, They're going to automatically judge the cops as coming we out of them because they're black. We did not judge them. We thought they black. were doing their and job. It's not like right. they're doing we thought here. they were doing their job. No. But when they started you joking around and playing, mm -hmm. how did you expect us to react? Right. Smiling? Okay, no. uh, Marcy, Monique, Vanessa, here's my question for you. Do you believe that this was an aberration, or do you believe that most cops racially profile black people? Where in our town, where we're or, from, mm -hmm. uh, we yes. believe they racially yeah. profile black yes, people. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Because it's, we had a town hall meeting, and too many people's hands went up that this has happened to them. Because there was a survey. They asked, like, how many people has this happened to? And so many people in the audience raised their hand. Out of 150, 40 or 50 people raised their hand exactly. and said, yes, this has happened to me. But, but for some reason, they don't file. That no, but if that you try to stop. The in the black Even if you, if you automatically think that you're racially profiled simply because you're black, you're going to give it. Attitude, you're going to give attitude to but the cops. It is that kind of brainwashing that we, that. Kind of brain we, that that. we have to change we're not within brain. the black they community. Made mistakes, well, is what you need to well, understand. Well, so. again, I repeat, if you feel that you're a victim, file, file a complaint. complaint. Of course. But I also, but I also agree with Jesse. Most officers are simply trying to do their jobs, and they have dangerous jobs, and we ought to appreciate and respect what they're doing That's for right. us out there every day. I agree. And, I and, have... and, and make sure that we weed out the bad ones. I agree. Right. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to talk to two women who say that they are discriminated against because of their black-sounding names. Don't go away. We'll be right back. So what would you do if you didn't get the job that you wanted because of your black-sounding name? A recent study shows that workplace discrimination begins well before the job seeker even shows up for an interview. This is Tequa Gator. Now, after sending out close to 100 resumes and receiving only two callbacks, Tequa began to wonder, hey, is it because of my name? Why do you feel it was because of your name? Well, I graduated from Alabama a &M University with honors. Mm -hmm. Started sending out resumes, hundreds, probably even over 100. No callbacks, you know. I got about two or three, but that was very discouraging. So I was like, you know, what's wrong with this? You know, what am I not doing right? Mm -hmm. Or am I not qualified for the jobs? Or I'm setting my expectations too high? What's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, so basically I just got to thinking. I was about a conversation that me and my girlfriends had had about names and how we could tell if names were black sounding. So I said, well, I'm going to try this. 
I'm going to start putting T Gator on my resume instead of T. T period Gator. T period Gator. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, out of 10 resumes being sent out, I get about two or three resumes or callbacks, mm -hmm. you know, interested in meeting me. So I'm like, okay, what's really going on? Mm -hmm. So I kind of figured that, you know, it must be something about my name. Do you, do you feel that way, Jesse? I think that, uh, that, that, that she was not getting callbacks because of her name? I mean, that could be possible. Uh, I think parents do a disservice to their children by giving them these so-called black names. We are in America. And, uh, you know, Annette, I have employees working for me. And when I run across a name like Shanene or whatever they call them, I tend to put those to the side because I know that I'm going to have attitude in my business. And because, uh, wait, 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 wait. Everybody who's got a so-called black sounding name, in your opinion, Jesse, has what, an attitude? Not everybody. But the fact that... Well then, well, then why would you put them to the side? Because the fact that uh, uh, they come up with these so-called black names implies that they're trying to... S separate themselves from well, America. Well, what Tequa you know, didn't name herself. America. Tequa didn't name herself. I know, that's why I said her mother's well, very, her mother was, was, was not thinking. No, it's a I, selfish act to give your child that type of a name because it's going to hurt them in but, the long run. But if it's a selfish act to give your child that kind of name, that's not the same thing as saying you've given your child that kind of name and therefore that child will have an attitude. This is America. We don't need a black name. And, and, and these people are trying to separate. They are angry at white Americans, Larry. So and they so, want to so separate you got a themselves You got a resume, Jesse. America. You hire people for, yes, in your organization. I do. You got a resume and, and, it, and it said Tequa Jones or Mary Jones. You wouldn't call Tequa Jones back because her name is Tequa? Most likely no. Jesse, it's hard enough to find somebody who's good, who's hardworking, who's motivated. To discriminate against somebody just based on their name, not looking at the resume, the rest of the resume, the rest of the credentials, is just bad management to me. Well, see, exactly. I, what you have to realize, Larry, is that people are in business. People, people are in business to make money and to make the, to provide a good service. Which is why and you so need they're going to always make, try to make the best choice that they can make. I, I am black, and I know how black people think. And when they come up with these African names. <laughs> Jesse, I think you should quit while you're ahead. We're going to take a break. We come back, we're going to meet a woman who says you shouldn't have to change your name to get a job. Don't go away. We're back discussing controversial forms of racial profiling. This is Shalanda. Shalanda, Tequa changed her name in order to get a job. Would you ever do that no. in order to get a job? No, I wouldn't change my name if you paid me a million dollars. I would not change my name. My mother took the time out to name my sisters and I, those beautiful names, and all I get is stopping stairs. Hmm. And that's all I, I, I need. And, and Shalanda, name... do you feel that your name has hurt you in the job market? No. Hey. Opposite experience in yours. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love my name, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, but as far as applying for jobs, when I was using my first name, mm -hmm. Tequa Gator, I didn't get that many callbacks. But you, but you haven't had that problem? No, I haven't. And why do you suppose she did? And if I did have the problem, I never knew about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe um, the problem is, is ignorance. That's all it could be, is ignorance. Why would somebody define what you can do by your name? And, and your name is... is <laughs> and it's interesting, you're, you have an unusual name, too. Yes, I do. But, but you haven't had the same experience. I can't say that I have. Mm -hmm. I haven't had that experience, now, now Jesse, I'm sorry. Jesse, would you hire somebody named Shalanda? You know, uh, I, I, I made it clear earlier, I would not hire a person with a so-called black name. Because I know that it's going to be a great situation. What, what America, call, what, what Black Americans need to realize that. Black name. Well, how, how can you label? Well, what, I mean, that's what, what they call them, black excuse, names. That's what. That's why me, they come up with those me, names. Black name. When you say black name to me, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the color black. Right. How can you define who this person is and what she can do by a black name? Well, you know, her a black lot of these, name. Her I, black name. Her black name does not measure her responsibility her black name well, does what you not need to realize measure. is that uh, a Excuse lot of a me, lot of Mr. people Peters, are, a lot Mr. of black Peters. parents are naming Peters. their children with black names they say i'm giving my child a black name i don't want them to have a white name 
And to me, that's a mistake because we are in America and black Americans need to get away from this black thing and become Americans and start why, living that why, way. Why, and so why give your child why, a name? Right. Okay, well, that's okay, okay. Je Jesse, Jesse, now that you've met Tequa and Shalanda, now that you've met her, right. now that you've met her, and they sent, and they sent you a resume, <laughs> With their name on the resume, now that you've met them, what would your reaction be? I mean, they seem like nice people, you know, and so, and that's, but. And so they, would, you, would you hire them? If they're qualified for what I'm looking for, yes. I would hire them. Therefore, they therefore to have ignored their, their resumes the first time would have meant that you would have ignored two good people. Right. By your own admission. But that's not my fault. It's their fault for having a black no, name. It's not our fault because, because I'm not, I didn't name myself. Well, your mother's fault. So that's your not, parents' fault. Black oh my goodness. It is I, I your parents' fault Excuse for naming me, you that. Peters. Because me, I would Mr. never, Peters. you know, I Mr. have Peters. four daughters. Right? My mother's name. I would not name, give my daughters my mother's black name names. Is Jessica. I know the audience wants to weigh in on this conversation. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back and find out what they think. Don't go away. <laughs> We're back discussing controversial forms of racial profiling. Hi, how are you? Um, I moved out here from Boston with my son, and um, he's the minority in his school now, and he gets to realize the prejudice and experience he's that. He's a predominantly, what, black school or yeah, Latino school? Yeah, Latino, Hispanic, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. black, and um, he's like the only white kid in his classroom. And he comes out and he dresses and he has the earring and the baggy clothes. And, you know, I'm not so worried about, you know, racial profiling and a policeman pulling him over. But the way he dresses, I mean, it could be mis misunderstood for like a gang look. And he could be killed for that look. And, you know, that's, that's a fear that, you know, these kids all have to worry about as well. And, 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 uh, your, and your point is what? That, that when you dress like that, people are going to draw a conclusion? Absolutely. And the first impression could be your last impression. And you could be killed for him. That doesn't make it right. It's what it is. That does, not, that doesn't make it right, though. Antonio, go ahead. We still need to, you still forget that, yes, we all know what is right, we all know what's wrong. But one system only works when another system is there to keep it in check. I know what's here to keep me in check, going back to prison, okay? I couldn't even get in college. But, but Antonio, the, point, the point is, she feels her child is being profiled based on the way he dressed, and he's not black. Oh, okay? okay? It's, it's, it's well, the, it's society. Sandra, go ahead. It's society. When you dress like that, it's the gangster look, the jailhouse look, the thug life, the whoever, the whatever. It's all bad. So to dress like that, they're gonna be judged by the book. The book gonna be judged by the cover. That's oh, it. They're gonna be judged. That, okay, it's okay, not okay, right, but that's right. how it is. All right, all right. We but understand that. That's how it is. We understand. So what are we gonna do to stop that now? What are we gonna do to stop that? Right. Okay, guys. All right. Antonio. Antonio. Hold these people in check. That's telling. That's telling. Hands are pulled up. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hi, yeah, I would just like to, I want to know what you would do differently, because I feel like racial profiling, as much as it's like inconveniencing a lot of people who aren't guilty, it really does like make a difference in solving a lot of problems. You know, you develop a line of suspects, and the only way to do that is based on how people look. There's why, no other way. We don't well, DNA test or fingerprint. why should you change the way you dress from somebody else's assumption of you? Why do I have to change how I look? Why do I have to, why do her son have to change the way he looked because somebody said it was a quote unquote gang thug look? Why do he have to change his own personal style? Why? Because someone else chooses to assume that he's a thug but or a gang But the reality member. is, it is why? a gang, it is a gang thuggish look. Just because the hip hop world or, no, or the, that's the, the, reality the, of it the black or, or right, certain right, blacks decide right. to wear their clothes a little Hi, Jesse. Loose. I'm Kim. I'm really upset about a lot of things you're saying. To me, my opinion, you're being racist profiling yourself. Absolutely. How dare you say some of the things that you're saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You are racist profiling. Okay. Uh, Go ahead when and respond, I say Jesse. that it is my responsibility as a parent to make sure that my children get the best opportunities that they can get by making them dress properly, work hard, and do what's right. How is that what racial profiling? And when I what say that children? when the officers stop you, don't give them an attitude because if you're not guilty of anything, 
There's no reason to have an attitude. How is that racial? How am I wrong about that? But how is having two earrings in your ear and cornrows projecting an attitude? It is. It's how a, is that it's projecting a, it's a an attitude? Look. It's a gang, it's a gang look. look. I mean, what is the, it's okay, a gang look? look. What, what's a gang look? I mean, we all know. Okay, that, that, we all know. Let, let, let's let's be real let about it. There are certain earrings. situations when certain attire should be worn. All right, the we all know the one that you make the final comment. Go ahead. But if I'm driving in my car down the street, hold on, Tony. The one that make the final comment. The attitude comes in when the, it's not being stopped, it's how we're treated once we're stopped. We're treated like okay. we don't have Okay. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We're back and we have time for just one last word. Using race as one of many variables is frankly a standard and established police practice. But stopping someone solely because of their race, I repeat, solely because of their race, is illegal. And it does happen, and it's wrong. But the overwhelming majority of cops who are out there serving their community are good people who are putting their lives on the line for us. For us. There are some bad apples, and the cops I know hate these bad apples because they make the rest of them look bad. As far as black-sounding names go, Jesse Peterson's got a point when he says that there are some people who will draw negative inferences from those names. It's just a fact of life. But I've run a business, and if you're watching this and you have a business, then you've got to know how hard it is to get, to get good, hard-working, competent employees. And to exclude a qualified applicant just because of his or her name is just not smart business. Thank you for watching. This is The Larry Oda Show, and we'll see you next time. We're back, and today we're letting our viewers weigh in with their reactions to the comments and opinions of some of our past guests. One past guest created a storm of controversy when he said he wouldn't hire a person with a black-sounding name. Watch this. I think parents do a disservice to their children by giving them these so-called black names. We are in America, and, uh, you know, I'm not, I have employees working for me, and when I run across a name like Shanene or whatever they call them, I tend to put those to the side because I know that I'm going to have attitude in my business. You hire people for, yes, in your organization. I do. You got a resume and, and, it, and it said Tequa Jones or Mary Jones. You wouldn't call Tequa Jones back because her name is Tequa? Most likely no. Please welcome back Jesse Lee Peterson and two of the thousands of viewers, I mean thousands, who responded to Jesse's interview. They are Mystique and Maurice. All right, Jesse, why do you suppose so many people were ticked off? Uh, most people hate the truth. Uh, uh, you know, in America today, if you tell the he's truth... Start, he's starting already, isn't he? <laughs> in America today, if you tell the truth, you know, you're, you're hated for it. But we must tell the truth in order to keep America going. All right, we and, cannot tell the truth. Okay, and, and, and in your opinion, Jesse, the truth is that people with black-sounding names are angry? Absolutely. Uh, that's why they create a so-called black-sounding name, because... They want to separate themselves from white Americans and from America. Okay, so, and, and so all right, this, this young lady's name is Mystique. Is that a black-sounding name? It sounds more like a, a strip tea name or something like that. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait one second, one second. If you, if you got her resume, would you t toss it aside? I would. Okay, I, would. I, I do get the question a lot when people don't, haven't met me. Am I a black woman? And I'm not. You're, 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 you're on the phone talking to somebody? Yes. Or I've turned in a resume or through family and friends, people are, that have never met me ask, well, is she a black woman? Well, it doesn't no, necessarily I'm not. sound like My a black woman. My whole point is, I'm not done. My whole point is that by you making that kind of statement, it's the most ridiculous thing in the world because you should not judge somebody just by their name. I am a white woman, brown hair, blue eyed, and if you can sit there and say that you would pass my resume up, yes. it's ridiculous. Well, what you have to realize is that I'm in business to make money. And I understand that I'm a very well-working... And it's well not working. my responsibility to uh, develop your character. I already have my out character. There, you're responsible. A... You're re as an adult, you're responsible for yourself. Exactly. And so, so you should prepare you... yourself so that you can be hired or... Uh, All right. in, in the but you're saying that you're going to put my resume aside just because of my name. No. And then well, your I comment have... about 
saying that I might well, be a stripper. But don't I have a right to protect my business? No, you don't. Because do you're being ignorant. Do you have a right to protect your business Ma Maurice? not by somebody's name? Maurice, go ahead. How are you protecting your business by not hiring black people? I'm, it's not the black person, it's the black name. It's the black name. It, you have to assume that a black name goes with the black person. Well, you know, it, I know in advance that if you sit back and create a so-called black name, then you have a lot of anger. And in my business, in my, in my, you're not, you're, in, in you're my not, business, you're rebelling against America, you're against not white America. The person and in my that business, I, I, but, but Jesse, in my Jesse, business, the person, I already know Jesse, that the person trouble. didn't name herself. You're right. not Mom or dad gave person. the name. Yeah. So, 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 so if anybody's angry, it's mom or dad, not the kid. Well, the kids become like the parents. Um, in the, you know, and as I said before, it's very selfish of parents to give their children that type of name because they have a responsibility to make sure that their children are able to succeed in life as much as possible. So what but does once the name we become have to do an adult, once we become an adult, life? once we become an adult, we have a responsibility right, so right, we can change right, that Ma 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 name. Maurice, isn't it, isn't at least this part true? You have a name that's unusual. Yes. You send that resume to somebody. Somebody else gets another resume with a standard name. Uh -huh. The person with the unusual name is probably going to have a more difficult time getting a call back. Isn't that just reality? That's probably reality. Mm -hmm. But it is reality because of thinking like this. Right. Right. That's what it boils down to. And you're right. And, and, but you're right about that. that. But that's that. Not wrong. Let's, 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 let's finish. Go ahead, Maurice. You are, I assume, over 50. I'm 55. 40 years ago was 1964. Yes. As a 55-year-old black man, how can you come on national television? Okay. You, uh, of, of anybody in America, a 55-year-old black man must know better. I do. You've gone, you've, gone through things, you've gone through things in your life that I have. Right. And I hopefully, pray to God, I never will. How can you justify coming on national TV and saying that I would not hire someone with a black name, even though in my life I have been judged the same way. Because, uh, How? You're right. I, How? You're right. You, you, let me ask you. Let, 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 let him respond, Maurice. You're right. I grew, up in a, I grew up on a plantation in Alabama. I remember the sign that says, for whites only, for colors only. So I know discrimination when I see it. But that was you, then. You see it when you that was America? then. This is now. Slavery is over. White folks are not waking up every morning at the breakfast table trying to figure out how to hold you down. They have no, their own issues to deal with. You were doing it for them. When I start a you business, were the one doing no, it. when I start a business, when I start a business, it is my responsibility to provide a good environment as much as possible. See, seeing that and it's you, hard enough dealing with people as it is. So why bring in someone that I already know is angry at society? How do you know that this person is angry because if you've you never create, seen them? You create the so-called black name. That's ridiculous within itself. I have to look at the, the most qualified person I think is going to work for my business. How I'm not going to know that if you're not even going to look at my resume, all right, all right. resume because of my all right, we're name. We're going to take a break and we're going to go into the audience and, and get some questions and answers from the, from the audience. But I want to say this uh, to Mystique and to Maurice and to the listeners and viewers. Um, I don't agree with uh, Jesse Lee's position on names. Uh, I made that clear last time. I'm making it clear again. I think, Jesse, what you are doing is uh, making a very foolish generalization and losing out. It's not. It's a wise. It's no. It's, it's a wise it's generalization. It's a wise it's a, decision. And you're losing out on the possibility of getting very good workers. That said, Maurice, I went to visit Jesse Lee, lives in the inner city, um, and he has a nonprofit organization. It's a self-help organization to get people cleaned up off the streets uh, and to lead a better life. I went into his house. There's a guy sitting over there. I said, who's that guy? And Jesse said he's, he was a homeless guy. got him off the street. Black guy. Uh -huh. Another guy in another room. Who's that guy? Homeless guy. got him off the street. He had four or five people that he'd gotten off the street living in his house to try to turn their lives around. So he's not an enemy. Depends, he's a good man. It he's not an enemy. It depends how you look at yeah. it. Yeah. He's wrong about this issue, but I just want you to know something about his character. That's all. What? We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. back, and today our viewers are confronting some of our most controversial past guests. Maurice and Mystique were just two of our viewers who responded to Jesse's statements. They called us, and they're here today to confront him. Uh, yes, I was wondering, if a person had a Hispanic sounding name, would you still have the same bias towards them? No, I wouldn't. 
So it's just African Americans that you have a bias. But you don't. Is. What you don't realize, there's no such thing as a black name. So you have to. Something have to be wrong with you to create that kind of environment for yourself. And so if I already know that that's trouble, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Why would I want to bring that to my business? A Hispanic person gonna have a Hispanic name. A Black American should have an American name, not yes, a Black name. Do you name. know what the word traitor means? Traitor. <laughs> traitor. I do. Yes. Do you, when you look in the mirror in the morning, do you realize that you are one? No, I'm not. How am I a traitor? You, you are taking a general stereotype of what you see in the mirror. There's something in your past yeah. that has made you <laughs> hate or dislike yourself. Well, and, you put, and you bring that to the table what every time. What kind of person would create a black name? Does that make sense to you? You just said there's no, no such thing person, as a black name. I know, but doesn't that tell you Je that? Jesse, Jesse, no such thing excuse me, Jesse, when you, when you hire people, have you had an experience where you brought in somebody with a, quote, black-sounding name, and that person was angry, and it happened over and over and over again, so now you have uh, reached the conclusion that black-sounding names uh, are names that people have who are angry? I haven't had it in my business, but well, then, I know well, then why, then why would you, why would you? who have. I am wise enough not to bring that kind of trouble into my business. I know how black folks think. Black all right, all right. So, so Jesse, everybody with the quote black sounding name, hold on. Everybody with the black sounding name should go down to the hall of registry right now and change their name. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that if they have a black sounding name, they need to realize that that is holding them back in life. And if you want you to succeed, people like you. whether you like it or not, that's what you like, like it or not is right. happening. Okay. Hold on, hold on. People. Hold on, well, Mistake. How are you tell Jesse, a Mistake, hold on, please. I think there's an old adage. There's certainly a lot of discussion, and it, people have their viewpoints, but don't judge a book by its cover. It's one of the most oldest and right. simplest pieces of wisdom. And what Larry and a lot of the other people are saying about stereotyping and generalization is think, embodied in that very well, you simple. You need to realize, I, if I start my own business, I have the right to do what I want in my business. And if you want a job from me, you need to prepare yourself for that. It is not my responsibility to hire you because you named yourself with a black name. You're show holding yourself back. That is, I'm not be. your mama, I'm not your daddy. It is your responsibility to do that. All right, all right. Jesse, is Condoleezza a black sounding name? Not to me, it's not. <laughs> Condoleezza Rice parents did not decide, well, I hate white Americans, so I'm, I'm going to create a black name. How do you know There's that? There's a difference in that. How do you know that? I mean, look at the woman. She's How not... do you know Tamika or Takesha's mother didn't feel the same way? How do you know? Do you know any American name with Tanisha? What is an American uh, name? Uh, all right, name? hold on. Okay, my question is to you, if I can't, well, if you hired me and my name was like Mary or Sherry and I still came and messed up your business, wouldn't you feel a little crunchy then? Wouldn't you feel kind of stupid? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. Like I said, like I said, it's hard enough dealing with people anyway. So, but if I had a person by the name of Mary and she was trouble, I'd get rid of her. Jesse, I would do you, that. You can't, you can't hide. You can't hide from being black, no matter how tired you well, try. Why am I trying to hide from being because, black? Because you're not. I want you to you, be your you best. Not, What's you wrong do, with that? And how can I be my best if you're trying to prepare yourself? How, how can I prepare myself for a name I never gave myself? But, but you, you're an adult. You can change your first name. You have a why? right to change the first name. Why? Why so would I? So that it doesn't hold you back in life. It's disrespectful. What's disrespectful? Your parents named you a name because that's but what they wanted But had your parents for. loved you, they wouldn't have given you a black name. <laughs> So, so Jesse, so Jesse, every, <laughs> Maurice, Maurice, <laughs> Maurice, Maurice, you okay? <laughs> Maurice, Maurice, you okay? <laughs> Maurice, you all right, man? <laughs> so, Maurice, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay, Maurice. We're gonna take, we're, we're gonna take a break. <laughs> Don't go away. After a public school teacher, Brandy Stokes, appeared on the show, we did call, Is This Discrimination or Not? We received almost 2,000 emails. A little lesson for you. <laughs> Brandy is back with us today, and she'll meet viewers who both support her and oppose her. That's next. Don't go away.